Welcome, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back to those rejoining us. Um, thank you for joining us here at Real Abilities Film Festival. Um, first off, um, we have live transcript um, for those who would like um, live transcript. We also have ASL interpretation um, for live transcript. Just click on the box um, on the bottom of the screen. Um, we'll put that in the chat as well. Um, and I'm seeing our interpreters are being spotlit as well. We also have just to share, um, one of our interpreters is actually going to be um, interpreting in um, Libras, which is um, Brazilian um, sign language. Um, so this is all gonna be an interesting experience um, for many of us. Um, this is our shorts two conversation. We're showing shorts here all day and then tomorrow as well. Um, these, I, I, I mean, I can't say enough how excited I am about our short films every year. These are some of the best films out there, honestly. So please check them all out. All the programs are, are great, um, but this is our favorite one. Not just kidding, I say that at all of them. Um, and um, really a great bunch of, bunch of films. Um, at 8 p.m., at 6 p.m., we're doing our Shorts 3 program conversation. And then at 8 p.m., we have a conversation for the film Crutch. Um, so please join us for that Q&A. Um, tomorrow, we have another whole day of films, including Shorts program at 2 p.m. And then at 4 p.m., we have our industry panel, um, uh, Game Changers and then 6 p.m. the um, uh, conversation for the film, the special. So much going on, we're here till Wednesday. Please check out all of our programs. We're even gonna have our first um, live program at the JCC with a comedy night and many more exciting events, including workshops and, and other conversations. So check out our whole program and please help spread the word. Um, we would be nothing without our amazing partners. We have so many fantastic partners to thank. Please check out our um, partner page for all of the partners. Um, I want to thank specifically for this one, of course, I'll start with um, Respectability, who will also be moderating. You'll hear a little bit more about the organization soon. Um, a fabulous partner of ours who's doing a lot of the work as far as inclusion of people with disabilities um, in media. Um, and uh, we're really excited to include them. And they were, of course, mentioned at our last panel for Shorts One as well. So check out the recording for that one if you weren't there. Um, we have uh, Barrier Free Living as a partner for this um, and connecting specifically to the film Definition. Uh, Key New York, which is connecting to the film David. New York Deaf Blind Collaboration, also connecting to Definition and Signmation to Definition. Um, and of course, many more relevant partners who are doing all of the work on the ground throughout the year and connecting to many of the themes in these films. Um, of course, we thank our audience for being a part of this. So please folks, be a part. If you have any questions for any of the films, please share them in the chat and we will unlock your mic so you can ask them live. Um, if you want to ask them by typing, just let us know. If you can't use the chat, just um, wave your hands around or wave your hand virtually and we'll, um, of course, connect with you. Um, finally, our um, um, presentation organization um, for this film and for many others, usually um, our films get presented at many locations throughout New York and this year virtually, um, our presentation partners have all come on board um, virtually. And I'm really proud to have once again, um, a partner that we've been partnering with for many, many years and it's been a huge part of Real Abilities, um, the New York Public Library. And here to um, introduce this panel, um, please welcome Marta. Marta, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hello and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us for this Real Abilities short film panel Q&A. My name is Marta Yaksimovich and I am a senior adult librarian at the 53rd Street Library. The New York Public Library is so pleased to partner with Marlene Meyerson, JCC Manhattan for this online festival. Real Abilities Film Festival New York is the largest film festival in the country dedicated to promoting awareness and appreciation of the lives, stories, and artistic expression of people with disabilities. 
Today, we are pleased to share a Q&A panel with the creators of the following short films. David, The Secret Life of Tom Lightfoot, Definition, Second Time, and Dead End Drive. Now, I'm happy to introduce the moderator, Leslie Hennan, Entertainment and News Media Associate for Respectability, to start the conversation. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you, Marta. Um, yes, as Marta just mentioned, my name is Leslie Hennan, and I am a writer and a filmmaker, as well as the Entertainment and News Media Associate at Respectability, a nonprofit fighting stigma and advancing opportunities so people with disabilities can fully participate in all aspects of community. I'm so excited to be here virtually hosting this panel with all of you. Huge thank you to the Real Abilities team for putting all of this together. Um, we have some great panelists who are joining us today. So I'd love to just get started talking about their incredible films. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about the film, David. So if we could bring up Fred Heckinger, who's an actor in the film, who is joining us from their team today. Hi, hey Leslie, hey everybody. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for being here. Amazing. So yeah, let's just get started. This film really resonated with me as I'm sure it did for a lot of audiences, um, you know, because it really found a way to blend comedy with more serious topics like mental health and complicated family dynamics. So Fred, I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about, you know, how your team was able to find that balance of comedy and seriousness and how that you know, ultimately played into your experience as an actor in the film. I, I, um, uh, I feel so proud of this short and, and this, the group that made it. Um, and, and from the beginning, um, everybody involved, Zach Woods who directed it and our whole cast, um, I, I think was always interested in, in um, the, 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 the the sort of wonder of life and and how it, it has both o always both things that 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 um I, I know that i get kind of irked by um movies that that feel like they carry a single kind of assumption um about either a person or an experience um um and and what was really exciting about this was was i, I think everyone involved recognized how surprising life is and and in moments of deep sadness there is also joy and in moments of great joy there's also sadness and um and and, and especially people then are also beautifully surprising so you, you you always think you know someone and it and the, the more that you're with them you know the more you the more you do get to know and so i, I don't know it just as, as an actor that was that was like the greatest thing ever because because it it, it meant that that um there was no Zach never wanted any winking to the camera or any sort of like 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 you never had to play the comedy or the tragedy you just were able to be present in the moment of the experience and um and surrounded by these actors who are so spontaneous that 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 uh y you can just follow and be surprised rather than try and control or, or lead it um, yeah. yeah that's amazing that's yeah, I love that you just mentioned, you know, about surprise. I'm just curious, you know, so many of these actors that you were working with have, you know, a background in improv. Was the, did you find that there were a lot of surprising moments in the process or was it like very, you know, sticking to the script? <laughs> well, it's right, because, so I, I've um, looked up to Zach who, who, who directed and wrote the film um, for my whole life since I watched him do improv comedy and all of the people who made it similarly? Yeah, I um, and and yet at the same time, this the script was so perfect that um, uh, most of it was most of what you see is what was scripted. We did improvise some stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what made it in that was improvised. At the end of the day, actually, mostly it was it was there. There's just a few little lines um, which I think changed around, but. But um, the other funny thing, though, was the, the fight, like the, 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 the wrestling match um, uh, but with, with my dad's character. Um, we, we, uh, that we did so many different versions of. And, 
physically we'd end up in different places each time. So that was sort of like physical improv in a really, really fun way. And it was, yeah, one of, it was really fun. That's amazing. Yeah, I loved that part a lot. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, I think, you know, we have a lot of people to get to, so we're going to hop into the next film. But if anyone in the audience hasn't watched the film yet, definitely go do that. <laughs> it is it is wonderful. Um, so next up, I'd love to talk about the film Dead End Drive. Um, and we have Tobias Forrest joining us today, an actor, producer, and writer from the film. We also have Eileen Gruba, actor, producer, and Austin Basis, actor, producer. Hello. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, wow, yeah, this film was incredible as well. One thing I really loved was the surprise ending. Um, potential spoilers ahead for anyone that hasn't seen it yet, but definitely go watch it if you haven't already. Um, but Tobias, I was wondering if uh, that ending was something you had in mind from the beginning as you were writing the script or if it was more of a fun discovery in the writing process. Um, it was all conceptual, honestly. I. I wanted to have a no zombie zombie movie. Um, I wanted to challenge myself with that. I needed to, um, I, I wanted to sort of lead people on with misconceptions about who and what, uh, what vulnerability is and what love is and all these things. And then I really, I love humor. So I needed a funny ending and a twist on it. And I thought, what's uh, funnier than trying to get your kid to eat vegetables when uh, they're the living dead? So true, yeah, that was, oh, I loved that. Amazing, I'm curious, so Eileen and Austin, you were both actors and producers on the film. I'm just curious if you know either one of you would wanna share a little bit about what your experience was like working on the film, anything that surprised you or challenged you? Well, um... I just remember the very first moment that Toby said, let's do a film together. I have an idea. And he said, I want to do a zombie movie without zombies. And I just, <laughs> I just laughed and said, bring it, send it over. And I was amazed that his very first draft was just phenomenal. And, and with all writers, you usually see 10 drafts before you get to something great, but his first draft was great. So I was like, let's do it. So then went over to the actor's studio and found uh, the best actor possible for the role and that's Austin. And then the three of us just came together and brainstormed on how we were gonna make it happen. Yeah. And we had a uh, lot of fun. Yeah, we did have a lot of fun and it was a, it was a short shoot, but we made it happen. And uh, Eileen, I'd seen work at the actor studio and I know her as an advocate as well because I advocate for type one diabetes. Um, having had it for over 35 years. And so um, we are compatriots in that respect, but I also respect her so much as an actress that when she reached out, uh, I almost didn't even have to read the script, but when I did, I was happy <laughs> that it was a good script. Uh, but I was, I was looking for an opportunity to work with her, especially after seeing her in um, so many uh, scenes at the actor studio, but also on, on camera and on film and on TV. The past couple of years, she's just been slaying it. So, uh, you know, and then to work with Toby was just, uh, it was just such a cool, a cool concept and a cool experience and challenging as an actor to deal with zombies that weren't there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Well, great job, everyone involved. Um, acting was wonderful. Everything was great. Um, so thank you so much. I think next I would like to bring up our team from the film Second Time. Uh, we have Rafael Oliveira joining us, the director and writer of the film, as well as Alexandra Okawa, who was an actor. Um, hello. Hello. Um, thanks for having us here. It's a Really pleasure, and we are uh, proud and honored to be here talking about our short uh, film. Amazing. Well, thank you both for joining us. Um, so this was another film that managed to combine some great elements of sort of dark comedy and as well as a surprise ending that sort of builds on the audience's expectations and really flips them. Uh, so I was curious, Rafa, as the writer and director of the film, could you talk a bit more about your inspiration behind the film and what led you to explore the thriller genre with this particular story? Uh, sure. 
So first of all, um, let me back in time for um, a little bit. I am an art director and I work in the advertising industry. So this is the first film that I direct and write. This is my first experience uh, in filmmaking. So what happened two years ago, uh, I've been working for um, the largest telecom uh, in Brazil, company in Brazil. So I presented a campaign for them uh, about communication, uh, which is the essence of its brand, right? And diversity, uh, which, which is a purpose that they have also. So when I mix together these two themes, I realized that um, this telecom uh, has never, has never um, approached this, uh, the deaf, the, the sign language communication in their uh, commercials, right? So I presented this campaign, but the campaign was rejected. So, but I took this, this, this theme as personal um, and I realized that uh, it seems to me that it is a very uh, relevant uh, theme, uh, subject to bring it to society, to discuss it. And also uh, a good idea that could be uh, good for a short film. So one year later, when I was looking for a story, when I was looking for a story to, to write and to direct, I remember about this topic and then I invited uh, Alex Alexandre Okawa, which is uh, besides actor, he's an interpreter, deaf uh, sign language interpreter. And then talking with, with him, I, I, I could understand a little bit more about the deaf universe, which is totally uh, new for me because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a non-deaf person. So, um, and then, and then, and then spirit, so I mix this, sorry, there is a car Come here. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the out. I'm I'm in the countryside of Brazil right now. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. So I mixed this uh, this this idea, and then and then I, I was trying to have. Um, I, so I as sorry as I'm a very curious person. Uh, I realized that when I see deaf people talking in public spaces or public settings, they're always pretty much always in a private uh, conversation. So they can talk about uh, intimacy. They can talk about illegal acts or even about killing someone that no one, no deaf person, people will understand. So that is the main inspiration. Uh, the whole story about the short, the short film. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Alexander, I would love to hear from you what your experience was like um, as an actor working on the film, and if you've noticed any um, surprising reactions from audiences who have watched the film. I'm so sorry. You're still muted, Luciana. Luciana, you're Sorry. muted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my name is Alexandri and I've been working here in Brazil for a long time. And what I feel is that Brazil is still, one of the biggest problems here is the ableism, capacitism, and it's very hard for us to take a place of uh, speaking about our own cause because hearing people are still very, very, very powerful. So um, it, it was important for me to show that um, in the movie and, uh, and, and do this, this film. Uh, so when I met Hafa, um, him and I had a wonderful relationship because it was, I was able to pass to him uh, all the culture about deaf people and the different perspectives and how hearing people see the world in a different way and how we are able to show that we're capable um, because we always see these movies where, you know, the deaf person is the victim or this is how we are portrayed. And this was a fantastic opportunity to really, um, you know, change that perspective. Um, and especially because it was a deaf it was a hearing director. So it was, um, it was important. It was important for me to show him all that, uh, all that side and how important accessibility is and all that, uh, all the things that uh, he was able to capture, you know, and to show that we are perfectly capable. 
Amazing. Great. Well, thank you so much, both of you. Congratulations on a wonderful film. Um, thank you so very much. I think, yeah, thank you. Next, I'd love to bring up our team from the film The Secret Life of Tom Lightfoot. We have director Ray Jacobs joining us today. Hello. Hi. So I have Becky Key, a member oh, of the Okay, great. There's Becky. We do have Becky who was an actor in the film. Hello. Hello. Hi, thank you both so much for joining me today and all of no, us. It's okay. I had, I had trouble with getting on. So oh, that's, just... okay. <laughs> that's no problem. Um, so this film had so many amazing fantasy elements. Um, and there was music and dancing. There was a flock of birds that plays a pretty key role in the imagery of the story. Um, so I was just curious, Ray, as the film's writer and director, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the filmmaking process and if there were any, you know, surprising challenges that came up for you and the team as you were making it. Okay. Um, well, um, I work with a company called Arty Party. So we're a company of about 12 performers with learning disabilities. Um, and we kind of work weekly where we come up with lots of different stories and some of them we, you know, we really want to turn into a film. Um, so, so yeah, it was a real kind of wrestle in terms of, of making all these images kind of a reality. Um, so for example, um, as you say, birds play a big part in the film and a lot of it was working as a team to try and get the ideas so first of all, our main character, Tom, we were thinking of him almost like having a birdhouse in his chest. <laughs> um, and then, and then it's so we evolved to this idea of a tattoo slowly being drawn, which the birds come out of his chest. And um, we were fortunate enough to have a special effects team called BDH working with us. And they said their life would be a whole lot easier if we had some real birds. And, um, and we managed to find a couple um, who work with the BBC um, who train birds and they had three beautiful, well-trained starlings. Um, so it was an incredible experience really to have that vision of Graham, the actor, you know, having birds and then being, you know, in front of a green screen with the birds there like flying out. Oh, amazing. Which is amazing. That's yeah. great. Yeah, as a filmmaker myself, as I was watching it, I was just thinking, I was like, how did they get these birds <laughs> to do all of this? That's, that's fascinating. Um, Becky, I'd love to hear from you as an actor. Um, this film had a fairly large cast um, and it looked like just a lot of fun to be a part of. I was wondering if there was a favorite memory you had or just a, a quick story that you wanted to tell about making the film? Um, for me, um, I like I don't like the height on a rooftop. I feel scared. Um, Cause I've never been on the rooftop before, so I'm worried. I'm cold. <laughs> um, I did. I like work working with the. Right, like that, yeah. Um, I'm working, working with arts and phone calls stuff, and um, I like going um, night clubbing with my friends for after work, after the phone calls and stuff. But um, uh, for me, I like being in the movies. I like, I like comedies, romantic, Disney films. I want to be in Neighbours in Hawaii in, um, in Australia because they got disabilities in Coronation Street and the, um, and the, um, EastEnders, and I like being one. Oh yeah, those are all great. Well, thank you so much. It seemed like a lot of fun all around. Great job, um, wonderful film. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it will be. 
brilliant. Oh. My favourite memories of Napa is um work um work with that work with that reunion. You know it's probably not yeah, at the bar in that voice first. It's really, really good. And I loved it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that seems like a fun scene. Great. Well, thank you both so much. We're going to move on to our last but not least uh, film today, which is Definition. Uh, we have actor Paul Vanurelli joining us today. Hello, Paul. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I personally loved how well this film conveyed the many nuances that exist within the deaf community, which is so important because, you know, every deaf person's experience is different, which also applies to everyone in the disability community as a whole. You know, we each have our own unique stories and perspectives. So that was one of my main takeaways from the film. But Paul, I was wondering if there is anything that yourself or the rest of the team were hoping would be the main impact of the film? Um, well, thank you for showing our film at the festival, and um, I would think that the the main impact uh, I would have people take from the film is that what it like uh, from uh, my impression through and point of hearing. So we have tried to portray uh, what it like to. I uh, had to rely on the pleading and to communicate face to face. And uh, what the actual world and what people say sound like from my point of view. So it was, it was a concept we came up with during the creating of the film to try and uh, actively uh, represent uh, my point of hearing what is sound like in my hearing aid on. So um, I'm hoping that people can empathise uh, with me or with any deaf person. Uh, every deaf person has their own uh, specific need and uh, specific uh, levels of hearing. Um, I think there is a wide variety of different abilities uh, even with uh, deafness itself. And so I'm hoping that people can empathise with that. Uh, what it like to be on the receiving end. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think all of that definitely came through, um, at least for me watching the film. Um, well, great. Thank you all so much. I believe now we have time for questions from the audience. So I am going to hand it over to Isaac, who's going to be handling that uh, portion. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, thank you all for being a part of this. Um, I think we're going to move now also to gallery view. Folks, if you have any questions, please um, put them in the chat and we'll call on you. I'm Bruce Rose and I see your hand is up. Um, did you... Want to ask a question, Bruce? Yes. In definition, there was this use of uh, the the main character of, of Paul is is wearing um, a shirt that's matched in all the backgrounds, and I wanted to, you know, that was sort of very cool. I'm 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 guessing it had to do with making someone visible who's not visible, you know but I would really like to know more about why that was chosen because it has a continuity for the entire film. Did you hear me? He's with us. Yeah, I got, I got what you said uh, because I'm reading the closed caption. Um, yeah, the, the shirt and wallpaper background, uh, the concept was that I feel like I am ignored quite a lot, or I am avoided uh, in everyday life, uh, especially when I introduce to people that I'm next, or they realise that I'm next. Um, after that, uh, people can uh, they have a fear of approaching, 
uh, to communicate with me or something. And um, so I feel it makes me feel like I kind of disappear. You feel ignored. Um, so that will take a background thing. And with a SERP, you feel like you are part of the background and kind of disappear. Receding. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Bruce, for the question. Um, there's another question here from TJ um, that I'll read out. Um, did you consider casting actors without disabilities? Um, this goes to all of the films. Anybody wanna take that? Should we go <laughs> one by one? Um, shall we start? Uh, there, I, I can start. Go for it, great. Um, okay, so about the, the protagonists, I haven't considered people without disabilities because um, I, I, I believe that it would, would be fake, you know? So, and this is the opportunity for them for deaf people to, 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 to start to, uh, to perform a film that's talking about this subject and this cause. So I, I didn't consider to, um, to cast uh, non-deaf actors in my case. Um, in my case, I was casting myself, so it wasn't really an option. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I am a quadriplegic, I'm a wheelchair user, and that was part of the story was, um, you know, does love trump disability when it comes to the end of the world? And for the other two characters, um, I mean, I know Eileen personally, and I know that she is a performer with a disability, but that wasn't um, considered in, in really the casting or the part that doesn't come into her part. Um, but I love the idea of, casting people with disabilities in roles that aren't necessarily uh, disabled. They're, you know, the character's not disabled. And um, to have invisible disabilities as well, like Austin um, and, and his condition being diabetic is another aspect to just, it adds layers after the fact, uh, which is great. So in my case, I didn't really have much of a choice and um, I believe in authentic casting. So if you can get as much in this actor as close to the character, then let's go with that. Ray, did you wanna go next? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, in our film, probably I think about 75% of, of the actors in the film um, had learning disabilities, and occasionally the, you know, there were um, people without disabilities in the film. And I think it's getting that balance between a kind of fantastical world, but, but also a, I don't like to use the word normal, <laughs> but you know, a world, you know, a diverse world as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um... And um, uh, Paul, do you know, as far as definition, obviously, I don't think uh, this was as relevant, but I don't know. I mean, you, you've, you've been acting, this is your second film, um, and you're actually someone who works, who worked beforehand um, behind the scenes on film. Um, how were you casted for this? Hi, I'm Kathy. Uh, with this because I met I meet people on set uh, in the in the local uh, film community and um, and I met the director and I know the sound design person so uh, I think they conspired to and they teamed up and they came up with the idea of making a film about me well the film originally was supposed to be about somebody else, but they dropped out. And then, so I agreed to make a film about me with them. Yeah. And Fred, not to leave David out of this, just uh, for the balance, um, can you share a little bit about the casting for that one, which I, I can imagine was, uh, was quite a process. 
Well, I, I actually, it, it, um, it wasn't really, I mean, it was, I, I, they, I read the, the script and I was so pulled over by it and, um, and, and talked to Zach and then quickly it, it came together. Um, so, so there actually wasn't a long casting process, but, um, but yeah, and, and yeah, but it, but it's a real, I, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's that for that. Just one other note on ours is that also our crew, I mean, we had a very small crew, but half of our crew um, had disabilities. So it was really great to have that across the board in front and behind the camera. Yeah. And we love that here in, in Real Abilities to see in front of and behind the camera. And you were hearing earlier from Respectability, who does a lot of the work to get those people both in front of and behind the camera, which, which is wonderful to see. Um, another wonderful connection between all these films that I've made is, um, and beyond that, I think there's a little bit of comedy in all of them. I think they'll um, uh, fit into the comedy genre somewhere, but um, if it's dark comedy or not. Um, but it was also, they, they, all of these films depicted, and we see this also in some of our other collections, but depicted um, disability with no pity. It wasn't the inspirational kind of disability films that we sometimes see. Um, and I was curious to know a little bit about, about when you're making a short film, um, kind of how do you hope the short film about that relates to disabilities will impact the audience? And if this, this element is something um, that you consider along the way. Um, Tobias, let's start with you. Because <laughs> you've been good. Uh, sure, I'm right here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it, it is there. The heart of it is that my character would not survive without somebody else in a, in the zombie apocalypse. So that ha is evident. Um, um, but I didn't want to like play down that too much or or play it up too much. I mean, it's very matter of fact that this uh, wife is helping her disabled husband um, survive, but they couldn't sort of do it without each other. If, you know, he was prepared for this all along and they really are a team and it's about that. And, um, and then it gets beyond the disability stuff and, and into, you know, what would you do in the relationships between uh, strangers and, you know, how do you survive in this world that for people with disabilities, it, it is an almost unsurvivable world. Um, so I had to address it, but then I wanted to put it to the side and, and let the emotional quality and the relationships take over. And without amazing actors, I mean, if I didn't have Austin and Eileen who are at the top of top of their food chain, I mean, uh, I don't know that it's possible really to, to not play into some of that stuff because you really have to have actors that aren't going to um, highlight that, you know, they can brush over it, but it's still there. Austin or Eileen, did you guys want to share? Um, on that one? I, I can go. Yes. Can I, go? I think, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no problem. Um, I, go ahead. I think, um, I think it's really important um, to include in every way possible. And some of the things that Tobias talked about, um, we've been doing a lot of films through the last few years that are inclusive in front of and behind the camera, but also all the diversity of disability because some of us have very noticeable uh, devices and mobility aids and our industry tends to still want to put everyone in a, in, a, in a box and we're trying to break open the box. So it's, it's good to always have all kinds of diversity, even within the disabled community on screen, like we did in Best Summer Ever, which you saw. Um, we don't always see devices and we don't always see the disability. So I love that this cast, Austin, Toby and I all touch on very different parts of the disabled community and experience and that the industry can see that it doesn't always have to be the subject and it and it doesn't always have to show 
but inclusion is is critically important in all in all aspects of disability and diversity. I I, I also want to just recognize again that Toby used uh, the perceptions of disability and strength and who had the power in a certain situation and turned it on its head and he used it to the advantage of the film um, that the obviously, you know, quote unquote, able-bodied person was in the position of least power ultimately, um, you know, is something that needs to be, uh, needs to be out there because I think, you know, people's perceptions are, have skewed the ability of people in this community, whether it's invisible or visible disabilities um, from playing roles like doctors, lawyers, and positions of power that in real life, they, they have jobs. Anyway, everyone, everyone works every, every career, but I, I felt like Toby's switch of that was kind of a, you know, I think an aspect of our film that really, uh, really turns the whole, you know, public perception of what ability or disability is on its head. Thank you. Let me hand this over to the second time team. I know both of them are eager to speak, Rafa and Alexander. Okay. Um, so answering about it, um, Isaac, you touched in a very accurate point uh, of second time story. Uh, I believe on my viewpoint, from my viewpoint, I believe that we have two main messages in, in this story, which is first of all, um, the structural and the cultural problem that we face in Brazil about sign language, which is uh, uh, pretty much no one from deaf, uh, the deaf community uh, speaks uh, sign language in Brazil. I believe that some other countries uh, face the same problem. Um, so this is a, a structural uh, and cultural problem. So people, sometimes deaf people sometimes feel apart from the community, from the society, from even for a private uh, party, right? And but but I believe that the main point here in this in, in short in second time, uh, sorry, the the main message here is about ableism. Um, as everyone in the in the party in the party in the in the, in the, in the story is looking at them. Oh, it's cute, uh, like they are victims, you know, uh, that like they are naive, like they are innocent. And what happens, and we, we understand in the end that it's totally the opposite. Everyone there could be their victim if they, if they want, you know. So I believe that this is the main point of this, uh, of the short film that, uh, I, would, that, I, that I tried to uh, touch and to be discussed. Alexander, you wanted to? Sure. Uh, just to say it, uh, Eileen, I think what Eileen said, uh, because you understand that uh, in the movie, um, there's a lot of people that uh, don't have a visible disability. So there is this... Uh, you know, there is this almost like this belief that you have to show your, your disability. Um, and, uh, you know, so in this movie, it was really great because in this movie, there were hearing people at this party and there were deaf people at this party. And uh, I showed that it was uh, difficult to interact to the guests at this dinner party um, and me as a guest. I was trying to make sure that everybody felt comfortable. So I was trying to show that, you know, deaf people and hearing people, um, they, can, they can interact without having to show their disability. So deaf people don't have to be showing their disability all the time. So that, uh, you know, because a lot of people just can't understand. And I think that just goes on to think that, Oh, deaf people are not capable. Um, you know, they have to show this, uh, this, this victim side of it in order for them to, to be visible. Um, so now it was pretty clear 
that uh, we were able to show that that's not the case. So this is this was the real deal. Thank you, Paul. From definition, what what did you hope the impact of the film would be? Well, uh, we were hoping that uh, the film could actually show uh, what it was from my point of hearing, like I said previously. So um, I think that the impact would be like, that left people can live a normal life. And um, rather, and try not to avoid that people. Um, and I, I'm kind of lucky here at the uh, in the South Australian Film Corporation, um, they have included initiatives to include uh, not only deaf people, uh, disabled people, and people from different backgrounds into uh, acting or being part of a film crew uh, on set here. And so I think they need to be incentive and initiative to allow people to do that uh, all over the world um, and to include people into the mainstream rather than something completely separate, categorizing them into one box to one community. Yeah. And how about uh, the Tom Lightfoot team, um, Ray and Becky? Okay. Right. Um, I think firstly, um, we just want to convey a very human, powerful story to the audience. But also at the same time, um, we want to push against sort of stereotypes of disability and people's expectations. So for example, you know, the film is based in a call centre where um, the, um, the operators all have learning disabilities, but are also helping everybody with their problems. And so, yeah, it is that twofold thing of just really wanting to get the audience wrapped up in the story, but also at the same time changing their perceptions about disability. Becky, did you want to add? Um, I um, what, did, what did you hope that the film would, um, uh, how would the film impact audiences? What is your hope for the film? Oh, um, I like all, all the things I like to do, it's like, like common, comedy, and films I was be in. So Becky, when um, when people are watching the film, yeah, what do you want them to sort of feel or, or think when they're watching the film? I don't know. I find it. I don't know what to say. That's okay. I'll, I think I, I, the only one that we haven't uh, gone, gone to yet is uh, the film um, David, and uh, um, we'll go to you, Paul. Yes, it will. Um, I, <laughs> not, on, not on the top, not on the top of the rooftop, no. Fred, sorry, Fred. Oh, yeah, I, I, I really agree with, I mean, I, I think one of the things that, sticks with me about all of these films that I'm really honored to be alongside them in this whole festival, but was also true to David was that we all need each other. And, and the, the there is um, in this piece, because it's about three people with extreme needs, um, um, that, which seem uh, like they won't add up that, that, that actually when we, we put it all out there and, um, and when we're less precious about ourselves and we recognize, you know, whatever about ourselves we might consider messy that actually 
it's it's beautiful and 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 so deserving of of love and attention and and um a big thing that zach talked a lot about was revealing human beauty rather than trying to manufacture it um which is something that i also feel this festival is always um done which um and, and there's just there's just so much that that we look past and, and i i i i very moved hearing paul talk about this as well of of feeling that that um you know there are there are things about that, that just being forgotten about and 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 I, I think everyone experiences that and um and when when we look at each other and are there for a moment we realize that 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 we the only way to to make it through anything is is to to lean on each other um and uh and so that's that i think was a big part of short. Thank you. All of your films really are, you know, just great films to watch and really fun and um, uh, important as well. So um, both in the production and the messaging. Um, we're out of time. So I do want to give a big thank you, first of all, to our audience for being a part, um, to Leslie from Respectability for moderating this conversation, um, and to Respectability for partnering, um, to the New York Public Library, of course, and to all of our other partners. Um, and of course, to Vimeo, who is our um, conversation sponsor and makes all these conversations possible, including our interpreters, who I am also grateful to. Thank you all so much. Um, next up is um, Shorts 3 at 6 p.m. Join us for that. See, check out all the amazing shorts and all the amazing films coming out for the rest of the week. We have um, great films here all week for you. Please help spread the word and join us um, at other conversations. Have a good evening.